Hello, anybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie's Double Trouble. I'm Mr. Debius, or just Deeb, and in the last episode, we started Kremwood Forest, and in today's episode, we're probably gonna finish it, starting with this next level, Squeals on Wheels. So we're going, we're going to be returning to the, um, Steel Mill, Steel Mill, Still Mill, Steel Mill levels for Squeals on Wheels with a fairly simple gimmick. You'll see these uh, meters along the posts that will be blocking gates, and there are going to be squeals, or rather, neeks, um, walking on these wheels, and you have to kill a red amount. So we have to kill six of those neeks in order to get through a barrier that will be coming up ahead. And as I go through this level and basically take out these neeks, most of them will be in your path and pretty easy to deal with, but there are a few that will have that will require you to go off the beaten path. I think, if I remember correctly, I actually haven't practiced this level, so we're gonna see about that. The main challenge is gonna be from some timing, um, some timing that you have to deal with. Like as you can see, there are red buzzes that surround the neek here. Red buzzes are invincible except to TNT barrels, and there might be something else, but I am not thinking of it. They weren't immune to invincibility. I mean, they weren't weak to invincibility, as we saw in the last episode in the previous level on the riverside where they were, and we bounced off them with invincibility. At least, I don't think we killed them. It would be crazy for me to forget something like that. So this actually offers me a good opportunity to mention one of the things that I did not know about this game, actually, that my friend Smog, and I'll stop calling him Smog Wastikin, because he hates it when I call him that, is that the barrels in this game, and steel kegs, I can't believe I forgot that steel barrels are called kegs, in this game infinitely respawn in a lot of areas. So when you throw one, they'll just pop back into existence. Uh, the first two games in the series did not do this to my memory. So that's actually pretty cool because it means that the game has a lot more forgiveness when it comes to the subject of um, when you need barrels to access secrets or complete levels, honestly. I mean, how what would they do if you couldn't complete a level because you weren't able to access the uh, barrels that were needed to get through the levels themselves? So that's kind of the payoff they had to do when they incorporated more barrels into the gimmicks of the levels. It's that, you know, you have to be able to reliably provide a source of them. But yeah, uh, as you pretty clearly saw there, we had to kill that Neek, but up on the upper left was where the first secret of this level was. And that's about the extent of what I meant when I was talking about this level will force you to go out of your way to um, open these gates. That's about the extent of what that means. So this time we have five ticks here, which means we're gonna have to eliminate 10 of these Neeks, which shouldn't be too hard. So now we're gonna throw Kitty Kong up here, but I forgot that you can only do the uh, thing that I'm trying to do with, I don't mean to keep, keeping, to keep picking up this keg, and that's where the second barrel, bonus barrel in this level is. It's odd, because when you throw Dixie Kong with Kitty, Kitty will teleport to Dixie, but when you throw Kitty Kong with Dixie, Dixie won't teleport to him, and that's just, it's a little bit strange. Also, this is another case where I think it might be easier for us to switch off to Dixie Kong, because this is another case of needing aerial control, where the threat in this level is clearly the threat of falling. Also, even though these wheels look like you might have to move against them, you don't. You can stand still on them with no consequence. But I'm getting a little bit lazy, and I need to get these bananas in order to beat this level. We almost cut it a little bit close there. A slight disappointment in the bonus levels of this game is that when you beat them as Kitty Kong, he has a unique eyebrow animation, but Dixie Kong doesn't get any special animation when she completes uh, one of the bonus stages. And this is, whoop. And as in other Donkey Kong Country games, you can ride on the steel kegs when they're rolling around, and they will take you a long ways away. But anyway, the reason that Dixie Kong doesn't have a special animation when she completes a bonus minigame I'm probably gonna guess that's because they just reused Dixie Kong's assets wholesale from uh, 
Donkey Kong Country 2, and they didn't really make any new assets for her in this game, aside from um, some images from the back. Like when you're playing the ball throwing minigame at, Sw at Swanky's tent. That takes care of Coin, who was in our way. Actually, he wasn't in our way at all. He was just off the beaten path, minding his own business. But, you know, we want that money. We need that money. They sh Why do they have DK coins anyway? They're Kremlings. Kremlings are all about stealing things that don't belong to them. And, you know, we're going to take those back. Incidentally, um, I just tested this now, as you can see. You can't throw uh, Kitty Kong at the Neeks to kill them. Which is interesting, because most enemies in the game you can kill by throwing Kitty Kong at them, so... That's a little bit sad. But for the most part, this level just kind of reuses the same concept again and again for, you know, just toward completion, or just in, in the course of completing it. This is where the level opens up the most, but, you know, other than that, it's like... You've seen most of what this level has to do in terms of its gimmick. Now they can only really add slight variations on it, like having to throw it at them from a different angle, or being on a moving platform. Double kill. And again, we have the red buzzes moving around them. I'm not sure if they're actually moving faster than the ones we saw a little earlier. Uh, that might be worth a comparison, perhaps. And somehow, it looks as though we have missed a Neek somewhere along the lines here. That's odd. I could have sworn that I explored every path. Well, no matter. It shouldn't take too terribly long to find wherever this other mysterious Neek may have disappeared off to. We'll just roll around and roll around. Something else that's worth talking about as we uh, go through this level, looking for this last Neek, is the fact that overall, and the mill level is a solid example of this, overall Donkey Kong Country 3 has a much more muted palette than uh, DKC2 or 1. Like, this level has a lot of... Well, there he is. I can't believe... I thought that I took care of him, but I guess I seriously didn't. Well, he's taken care of now. But basically what I was saying is that DKC3 has a more muted palette than the first two games, and that is a little bit strange to think about because those games weren't super colorful to begin with. Donkey Kong Country 1 had its own fair share of washed-out levels and... Uh, like, like dank, dark mines to go with the uh, bright tropical trees. DKC2 had some really colorful levels, but also some not-so-colorful levels. But it's striking how many vibrant levels the second game had in comparison to a place like this where everything's just kind of dull. But as you can see, uh, opening this door has allowed us access to this trap door. And all the other trapdoors we have seen along the way up have mysterious be, have mysteriously been unlocked, allowing us to access this little thing. By, and by this little thing, I mean this door that is opened up. And this will allow us to uh, show off a new animal buddy. Parry, the parallel parakeet. Um, this is all it does. It moves parallel to you, and it can kill the big birds who I think they're called, uh, uh, not, I think they're called booty birds or something like that. Something very silly, because they usually have treasure and you gotta pop them. But that's pretty much the extent of what you'll be seeing with Perry is, um, popping those big birds and also having to avoid bees with them. And usually if you can get Perry to the, um, no Perry sign, he'll turn into a really good reward. This is the first in a level introducing him, so it's not a particularly big deal for what you get. Now with that taken care of, we're going to be going on back to Swanky's Sideshow where we're going to be doing another one of these minigames. Mainly because we're not going to do a, uh, because bip -dip 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 -dip, we are going to be showing off each of the minigames basically here. Here's my strategy guide for you, give it up now and save your money! I think that's a better old man voice than I was doing before. So this one goes a little bit longer than the previous one because you gotta hit 25 of these targets and you have a minute to do so. So it won't take super long, but 
as you can see, your goal is to just hit as many of these targets, hit 25 of them before Cranky hits 25, and it's he's effectively a time limit because you're relying on him to miss his targets at least once or twice. And I don't know if his pattern is fixed every time or if there's actually an AI behind him uh, targeting these targets and movements, so that's something interesting to consider. I might look that up, see if I can find anything more about that. No big deal, though. Did you see my last shot? It went clean through the target. Honest! Ah, I'm old! And we're gonna be getting, you know, lots of coins, bear coins. We are gonna need these, because as a reminder, there is an item in the in Bazaar's shop that costs a lot of bear coins. So, you know, we're gonna want that. And without further ado, we are going to be moving on to the next level now, Springin' Spiders. It's another tree level. Another tree level. And it's much uh, more blue, much bluer and than the previous level was with the palette change, so you know. So the spiders are back from the previous uh, level that they were in. There were only a couple in that level. But the difference here is we now have yellow spiders, which, as you can see, they just keep on bouncing. You know, I say as there's none on screen, but yeah. Here you can just visibly see it regularly bouncing up and down without any input from us. The red spiders require somebody to be standing on them to use them. I think these guys can hurt you if they land on you? Maybe? Well, no matter because we have unlocked, unlocked, I mean, we found a transformation barrel for squawks. I remember in the first episode, in the first take of the first episode, I said something about On Guard being one of the few Donkey Kong Country animals to uh, reappear in this game, and squawks is one of the other ones. In fact, I think him and On Guard might be the only ones, but I might be missing someone. I can't believe I got hit there. Well, no matter, because we will find ourselves to the DK Barrel, where our job is to grab 15 bananas. As you can probably tell, it's not really easy to do this one without uh, squawks, by which I mean it's impossible because you can't really get up here. And I killed myself on the red buzz. Make no mistake, that is a challenging barrel challenge. So we're going to be going back and doing exactly that. Going to get that O. And we're going to come back down here and get the bonus barrel again, because we are not leaving without that bonus coin. You know, I got to say about the bonus music for this game, it's, I really like it. Particularly, I really like the bass line, the part that's like, boom, 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 boom. I mean, I, I'm, I probably don't have to explain to you what a bass line is in the music. I don't. I'm sorry if that was, you know, I'm not condescending you or anything. It's just, I like the bass line. It's just really good, really good in the bonus music stage. Bonus music stage? In the bonus stage music. It's also worth noting, I don't know if you've noticed in my episodes so far with the audio levels, the bonus stage music is really loud. It's quite loud indeed. Now you might be wondering what I'm going back this way for, and that's just to kind of explore a little bit of the path that we eschewed in flying up with squawks. But for your trouble playing as squawks, you get yourselves a bear coin, and we need bear coins, so on, off we go. And here we've got the red spiders that I was just mentioning a little bit earlier, in which we saw in the last tree level, which, you know, as you can see, they jump up and down. These guys actually have pretty creepy uh, rendered art, but then you could say that about a lot of the pre-rendered art for a lot of the enemies in this game, and just a lot of the assets in general. I mean, here's here's the here's the spiders. Here's Kitty Kong. It's terrifying. It's terrifying, I tell you. It's like they went so far. It's ridiculous to look at. 
Now, as we're jumping up and down on this spider, you probably notice that there was a ledge on the upper left, so we're gonna be trying to get to there. Unfortunately, this game does not retain momentum when I can't believe that happened. So now, I'm gonna have to either find a DK barrel or kill myself in order to get up there towards the top because I landed on the buzz. What I should have done was something else entirely. Also, I think that's the first time we heard Kitty Kong's death cry, and yeah, he, he screams. He screams a lot. So where does this put us? It puts us right here. So I think this puts us right back where we need to be. And then from here, we can throw Dixie Kong up here. And then we want to not throw the barrel like that. We want to... There we go. We'll throw uh, Dixie Kong up through the hole. And that gets us the DK coin for this level. One of the interesting things about this level in general is how much content there is to miss in it if you take alternate paths and that's just kind of an interesting little feature i'm not sure why this is here though oh that's why that's there an extra two lives well that's a pretty cleverly hidden secret although i don't know if that balloon needed to be invisible just the challenge of getting down there i think might be enough and we killed sonic i can't believe sonic is dead but he is Jump on down here. And as expected, that spider jumps a little higher than it looks. TNT barrel will put us right through there. Is there anything else down here though? There's a beetle. And a platform there. Now I know I mentioned a little earlier and quite a few times that some of these levels have a less linear design approach, but ultimately what I meant to say was that the levels have a lot less, they, they're, they're less oriented on only moving in one direction. So there's more combination of horizontal and vertical movement than just purely uh, horizontal movement like there was mostly in the first two games. Well, the treetop stages, or as we're seeing at least in this one, it actually does have a fair amount of non-linearity in it and the ability to go back and explore certain areas, so that's pretty cool. Also, a lot of the secrets in this game are up on these ledges, and here's a very rare enemy. I forget what it's called off the top of my head, like many things I've been forgetting lately, and I'll put up a name for it. Yeah, that's what that thing's name is. And ultimately, the second bonus barrel of this stage is pretty easy to find. 30 stars. That's no problem at all. So as you can see, the gimmick of this uh, star stage is just going up and down and getting all of the stars. Uh, for that one, you just want to try and clear out single columns without trying to just weave back and forth. That'll just make your life a little bit harder. I think you get like three or four goes worth of time. Maybe, may, maybe even five if you're good enough. But with that, that brings an end to this level, Spring and Spiders. And we got everything in it, and I think that is actually a good stopping point for today. I know we only did the two levels, but the game rapidly kind of... Rapidly kind of? It rapidly increases the length of its levels uh, comparatively to the first level of the game. First world of the game, that is. So that's gonna probably keep the time length of these episodes down a little bit more or rather the number of levels done per episode will be a little bit lower than usual. So probably going to be aiming more for two per. I just think that'll make the episodes a little more friendly to watch. But anyway, without going on for too much longer, I think I'm going to call the episode there, as I've been saying. And in the next one, we are going to be entering Brash's Cabin. So if you want to see more of Donkey Kong Country 3, I hope to see somebody in the next one. Bye bye